Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got a HP Omen here, which um, has no power. Uh, so story behind this one, the customer was replacing the DC jack, um, the charger port on the side. And uh, according to their, according to their um, letter, they replaced the DC jack and then after plugging it in, they got a whiff of burning electronics and the device was dead. Um, apparently, um, a couple of other computer shops have had a look at this one and could not fix it. So that means one of two things, either A, it's a rabbit hole, or B, neither of those two shops were familiar with doing board repair. Um, because as I say, this one might be super simple, we'll find out. Um, burning electronics, that's kind of a good sign as far as I'm concerned, because that means something has actually gone bang and has probably got a crater in it. Um, and that means it's easy to find. Uh, what you don't want is a silent death where it just doesn't work. Because a silent death, that's really hard to find. Whereas if something actually goes up in smoke, then that's very easy to find. So yeah, let's get these screws off, get the cover off, and we'll do a visual inspection. And hopefully we'll find something. Okay, our DC jack is over here and comes into here. Is that a mark I can see on the uh, reverse protection diode? I'm not going to be that lucky, am I? Let's get the multimeter. So I put my multimeter in continuity mode so it beeps when I touch the probes. Beware of continuity mode. Remember, continuity mode will beep at anything below, bleh, I don't know, anything below 30, uh, 30 ohms or so. So it's not, it will beep on low impedance. So um, we'll cover that if we get to it, but low impedance can mean, say, 5 ohms, for example. And 5 ohms is not a direct short, that's just low impedance, which is why in continuity mode your CPU always looks like it's shorted to ground. It's not, it's low impedance. Anyway, we'll go beat mode for now just so we can do some idiot checks. So I'll put my black probe on ground, and I'll check any other ground point, and we beep. So. Ground to ground. All right, so uh, if I touch the red pins coming in here, those are beeping. Let's bring you in a bit closer. So if I touch these positive pins coming in, we get beeps. And so that means we've got a direct short across the DC in jack. That's why things were smoking, because uh, that means we've got a 19 volt short across. Um, so because we have a direct short across the input jack, that means I'm going to see a direct short on this um, diode here anyway. So what is this diode exactly doing? Well, this is a TVS diode. Uh, that is a transient voltage suppressor diode, if my terminology is correct. Um, they are also sometimes known as, sometimes they are seen as just shot key diodes or rectifier diodes. These types of diodes are not necessarily the same, but they often come up. This is often just terms that people are searching for. Um, now, for this particular implementation, doesn't particularly matter if it's a shot key, a rectifier, or a TVS diode. It, they all kind of do the same thing for the purposes of this laptop. What it's doing is you've got the positive and negative, positive, negative input, and the diode is what is connected in reverse across them. So the positive of the diode goes to the negative input. So this means that typically when power is coming in to the laptop, it does not travel through the diode. The diode blocks that voltage, so it does nothing basically. However, if the voltage is too high, if it reaches the breakdown voltages of this diode, so it's transient voltages, or it's shot key voltage, or whatever type of diode it's using, then it will conduct. So if you get a gross over voltage, so say 50 volts because the charger is way too hot, or 200 volts because the charger has failed and is putting mains voltage into the laptop, or if you've got an ESD, an electrostatic discharge that's putting 2000 volts into the laptop, it will conduct and it will clamp that voltage directly down to the neutral, or the ground, sorry. And so this will do whatever damage to the charger. It will cut out the charger or blow up the charger or the charger will just get put in a dead short circuit, but it protects the laptop, which is the important bit. 
Now, I don't know why the, the diode on this one has gone bang. I've seen this fault several times on laptops and it's never been clear. Well, sometimes I see it when people have been using the wrong charger. Sometimes I've seen it because they've put it the wrong way round. It's never clear. Um, sometimes it looks like it's just spontaneously failed. Um, but the fact remains is that if it's gone bang, it probably saves the laptop from an event. So while it might appear like this guy is just there to sabotage the laptop, but more likely it saved the laptop from death by something else. So um, either way, we're going to replace it. At any rate, when you have a short circuit across your incoming power, across your DC jack, this guy is your first suspect. So what I'm going to do though, before we actually go mad, I'm just going to disconnect the DC jack and I'm just going to double check that our short circuit disappears just in case the short circuit is inside the DC jack itself. So let's go back into continuity again. And we'll just double check that we're still shorted. So that's negative to positive. Yeah, we're still shorted. And the DC jack, negative to positive, is not shorted. Yeah, so the DC jack is fine. So chances are this guy's blown up, that's my guess. Uh, now, am I going to try and ninja that off the board without stripping the laptop down? I think I am, because these gaming laptops are an absolute pig to take apart. It's one of the reasons why I really, really hate working on gaming laptops. Uh, some people might be like, oh, look at that big gaming laptop, this will be exciting. I hate working on gaming laptops, man. They're bad news. <laughs> They're terrible news. Right, uh, so because I'm going to work in situ here, uh, I'm going to use some captain tape and mask everything up. Lots of people have said in the past, oh, you should have captain taped. And they're absolutely right. I often forget that I have captain tape or capton tape to pronounce it properly. I forget that, I've ha that I have it and then I just work in situ and sometimes things get singed. Just in case you've never seen this stuff before, this is essentially high heat sellotape. It's extremely heat resistant, so in, it can take direct blasts from hot air and soldering irons and stuff like that. And it's also got a lot of sticking power. If you're doing assembly and you want, uh, you just need to tape a cable in place, um, captain tape lasts for a real long time, unlike sellotape or electrical tape, which just goes sticky and gooey and flakes off after a relatively short amount of time. So yeah, if you're doing repairs, captain tape, it's your best friend. So that area has now been masked off just to protect it from the heat. I'm going to switch on my hot air station. Maximum air, maximum heat. All right, let's get you off the board. Come on, move. My captain tape is falling loose. Don't let me ask twice. There we go. Okay, now question one. Has our short circuit disappeared? It has. There's no beep across that diode. And just for posterity, we'll just check across the DC jack. Ground to positive. No longer a short circuit. And if I just pop in this guy over here, here is our diode, which conducts in both directions. That diode is kill. It is dead. All right. How about that? Easy peasy. That guy's our problem. So that is just a rectifier diode. So um, theoretically, we can leave this off the board. It's not mission critical. The laptop does not require this to work. However, um, I believe in replacing these because it saved the board once already. Um, and yeah, as I say, you never know. This guy going bang might have saved the, uh, um, the whole motherboard from going bang sacrificial component. 
Um, think of it like a fuse, it just works slightly differently. My ludicrously expensive TVS diode has arrived, and uh, the not expensive 100 pack will be along in a week or two, and then I won't have to buy ludicrously expensive ones. Uh, at any case, if you do do repairs, you should probably consider getting these in stock because, you know, they do pop up now and then. And if you buy these ones, that'll probably sort you out for the majority of laptops, to be honest. Even if it's not an exact match, it's probably going to be close enough. Right, so we're going to stick this guy on. I'm going to warm up my soldering iron and just uh, touch up those pads. We'll put this one on, and then after that, I've just got to basically just service the laptop to make sure it doesn't go bang. The only thing that bothers me about this whole situation is that I don't know why the TVS diode died in the first place. But sometimes the only thing you can really do is just replace it and see what happens. So we'll do that. Oh, that other pad is not as flat as I thought it was. So we'll touch that one up as well. Now I'll just do the obligatory short check. So we should have ground in the middle and not ground up here. Good. Ground, not ground. And we can check that this diode is incorrectly because if I put my multimeter into diode mode, this will pass a voltage between the probes and check how much of it drops off. So if I again put my black probe on ground, and if we go to the positive pin, we have an open line, no connection. And to the negative point, we have zero. So there's a zero volt drop to ground, which is effectively a direct short because we're on ground. And on the other side of it, as you can see, again, we're open line because it's not conducting. And if I swap the probes around to simulate the polarity being incorrect, and I put my black probe on positive and my red probe on negative. And as you can see, we're now seeing 2.3 volts passing across the diode. So that shows that the diode is now conducting because our probes are reverse polarity. So that's how we know that we put the diode on the correct way around. If we had our probes on black to ground and positive to positive, and we were seeing a drop, that would show that the diode is the wrong way round and it's conducting when the polarity is correct, which would be wrong. Right, so with all of that done, I'll just remove the last of my captain tape again. I'll plug the uh, DC jack back in. And all that remains is for us to double check that it doesn't blow up when we plug it into the charger again. So uh, I'll pull the camera out just so if it does blow up, you guys get a really nice view of that because that's always exciting. Charger connect. And I have a light on the charger. And nothing has exploded. Good times. So this was one of the easy jobs. And if you're a local computer repair shop and you're kind of scared of getting into board repair and stuff like that, I'm not surprised because gaming laptops are not an easy place to start. But this is a good lesson just to demonstrate the fact that there are some basic checks you can do. And while you don't always get as lucky as this, every now and then it really is just as simple as the TVS diode is dead. And that's something that you can find just with a basic multimeter like the one that I use. We didn't need any super expensive equipment here. You could have done this with a basic soldering iron and a basic hot air station. I mean, arguably, I could even have removed that diode without a hot air station as well. So again, if you're a bit scared of getting into board repair, uh, this is a re faults like these are a good place to start. So keep your eyes out for them. There we go. And as you can see from the icon in the bottom right, we are now on charge. Uh, the battery is very flat, so it's showing minimum. But we're on charge and the laptop turns on and works, which is more than what it was doing when it came in. So we are all finished. 
Thank you very much for watching, everyone. As always, my support links are down in the description below for my Twitter, my Patreon, my Discord, and my Instagram as well. Uh, otherwise, stick around for the end card to see them there, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.